Hello everybody, uh, it's great to be with you today as we uh, come around the, the word of the Lord. I, uh, I hope that you're really keen to look at God's word today and uh, I'm really keen as well to share it with you. Um, I've had a, a word on my, on my heart for the last week and uh, it's really just been confirmed to me over and over and over as I've uh, just listened to others speaking and reading things, and uh, I've just known that God is, is wanting this word to uh, be spoken. So let's just pray first, and let, uh, let's look at what God has in store for us. Let's pray. So God, we thank you this morning for every person who comes Lord, to listen to your word for all of us, Lord, we pray that you would open up our hearts and you would open up our minds, Lord God, so that we can hear your voice. Oh God, oh, speak clearly to us, we pray. Move within us, we pray. Lord, may your word be so powerful as we look and uh, seek your face through your scriptures today. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. Well, as I said, I've had this word on my heart uh, for the last week or so, and um, it came about when I was talking to actually one of our wonderful ladies at Bethel, Janet, and she, she mentioned the big H word. And... I don't know what that's uh, make you think, but the big H word, uh, I'm not meaning heaven or I'm, uh, I'm not meaning hell. No, not, not going to that place. The big H word that uh, I think is absolutely just necessary for us to gain a better understanding of um, is what I want to share with you today. And um, that word, that word is humility, humility. If you had have asked me a couple of weeks ago, what, um, what do I think the, the church needs more, more than anything right now? What do I think the church needs more than anything right now? And, you know, I, I, I would have said probably, you know, off the cuff, um, well, the spirit of God. And, and that's so true. You know, maybe I would have said, um, and maybe you would have said this too, uh, repentance. The church needs repentance. And that would have been a really good way of putting it. But you know what? I, I think now, firstly, what the church needs to move in now, before most anything else, is humility. I think humility is the most vital uh, virtue, I suppose, grace that needs to flow in, in our lives and in the church right now. Without it, I don't believe that we will move forward in what God has for us. I very much doubt that we will. Humility is the key thing, I think, that Spirit is talking about now to, um, to the church. It's interesting, I, as I thought about that, I, I, remembered, I remembered myself many, many years ago. I was young, I was in my late 20s. I'd, uh, this was about 19, 1984, I'd say. And uh, I'd gone to visit my sister in Bendigo with my family. And, um, of course, we, we went along to her church at the time, which was experiencing a real move of God. Uh, Pastor Terry Hunter was the, the very, very wonderful leader at the time. And I hadn't been uh, going to church much at that point. I, I really had been falling away from God pretty drastically. And yet something was crying out in my heart. And um, 
it had been stirred up a couple of weeks before that when I'd gone along to Barable Hills when they used to meet at Matthew Flinders. And here was Matthew Flinders full of people, great worship, great uh, word by uh, Pastor Stuart Ray. And uh, something had stirred in my heart and because my heart had become so hard and uh, but something was cracking open. And uh, I'd been living in the, the sense of failure and shame for, for years before this. And God was, was in his mercy, was bringing me out of it. So we're at my sister's church and um, I, I, don't even, I don't even know or remember what the sermon was. Uh, I should, but I don't remember it. But I know it was powerful. I know it was in the spirit. And uh, during the, the sermon, right near the end, my heart just broke open. It was just amazing. Um, I, I just couldn't help myself. I, I just wept and I wept and I wept. God had just broken my heart open. The hardness was being dealt with. And... Uh, I didn't know what to do at the time. It was it was both great and it was both awful because <laughs> here I was in front of my sister and brother-in-law, in front of my children and my wife and everyone else around me, weeping uncontrollably. And I couldn't do anything about it. God was breaking my heart open. You know, I wondered the other day if, if it wasn't God's tears as well I was feeling as he, he was watching my life and seeing the way that I was heading, um, you know, after being saved when I was nine years old. During that time, though, when I was weeping, I, I, I almost wanted to run away. Well, I did. I wanted, I wanted to run away. I didn't want this to be happening to me anymore. <laughs> It was incredible what God was doing. And I don't wonder if in the days, and in fact, I, I should say it better than that. I believe in the days ahead that the Spirit of God will fall on people like this and break their hearts open in repentance and deal with them in his mercy and his grace. I am sure that God is going to do that. I really do. I, I think what I experience is a foretaste of what God is going to do in revival in these coming days, and especially in this next decade of harvest. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I was very ready to, um, as I said, run away. I, <laughs> what I did, I almost in my mind said no to God. I really did. Uh, and in that moment, God gave me my request. I, I know I've shared this before years ago, but God gave me a request and he withdrew his presence from me. And uh, that, that shocked me when I felt the, the, the loss and the fear of, of his presence being gone. I, uh, I couldn't deal with that. I would rather deal with the, the humiliation that I was feeling. And, uh, and the way I was so vulnerable to lose that presence of God. I suddenly realized what I'd, what I'd had. And, you know, it's that old saying, isn't it? When you lose it, you know. Thankfully, after a big struggle, I, I, I relented, praise God, for his patience. And I came back that evening and, again, I had to humble myself and go forward at the altar call and be prayed over. And it was a, it was a very putsy prayer, if I could put it that way. There wasn't anything powerful about it. I didn't feel anything. I didn't fall over. But God gave me his grace. God just did so much because... I had humbled myself and responded to him. He'd given me the grace to do that. 
And so, you know, I was so touched by that. Um, I was hugely touched by that. My whole life changed. Um, it really did. It changed completely. And I was healed uh, of various things, and I was filled with the Spirit, and everything was different after that. It took about a week for, every, for it to sort of awaken fully within me. So I want to encourage you, if you get prayed for, sometimes you, know, sometimes you won't feel a lot, but be encouraged because you know, the Spirit of God is at work, and it will manifest, it will come forth if you hold on to what God has done. You know, it's uh, it's never left me the fact that I was felt I felt so so full of humiliation. Uh, I felt so terrible during this time, but it was humility. It was the humility that God blessed, and He certainly blessed me that particular day. You know, let's read some scriptures now. And um, let me read to you firstly um, from Micah 6.8, and you'll know Micah 6.8. He has showed you, O oh man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. To walk humbly with your God. There's the um, there's a, a real foundation, passion, foundational passage of Scripture, isn't it? What does the Lord require? To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. And some other great scriptures too that I just want to read to you as well. And um, we're going to read from James 4, 6. It's the first one. James 4, 6. But he gives more grace, and therefore it says that God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. That was me on that particular day uh, back in 1984, that God gave me grace gave me grace, grace when I, I didn't deserve it, but such was his heart of love towards me. As I said, I think it might have been his tears too. And he pray, and those tears he cries over us many times, I'm sure, when we, we drift away. But he gave me his grace. And, you know, humility is such a powerful virtue in our lives. It's a, it's a very powerful virtue. Why? Well, I think I think it's because humility is keeps us in the in the opposite spirit to our enemy. And his tool against us is pride, isn't it? That's what he's expert at. You know, his his tool is pride and Yet humility keeps us in that opposite spirit to the enemy, where I believe he, he, he can't touch us. And you know, I, I, I so believe that when we're in that place, the, the changing grace uh, of heaven comes and, and brings us into a place of, of uh, receiving God's power to change and to grow, and to become more like him. I'm sure, I, I'm sure humility releases the, the grace and power of heaven into our lives. And this is, this is what God wants to do right now um, in the church, all over, uh, all over, everywhere. Humility needs to permeate our churches, needs to permeate our lives and we can't get past it and we shouldn't try to dodge it actually it was very interesting today that um, a person rang me up and uh, wanted to pray with me during our prayer time today and um, 
it was funny because what they wanted to pray about was really, if I was honest, what I needed to pray about as well. And <laughs> I couldn't just pray for them. I I had to I had to to humble myself. I had to humble myself. And I had to pray a we prayer. Lord, touch us, touch the two of us in this area, because I was in the same place as the person who rang me. And I just could not pray a prayer as if I was okay when I wasn't. I needed the prayer as well, and I needed to join with somebody. And uh, it was so funny. I was having to uh, sit there and think, Paul, here it is, humility, humility. This is what we need to have. This is what releases God's grace and power. Humility. Oh, how the church needs humility. It needs repentance. It needs the spirit. But, oh, right now, oh, God, um, our prayer, oh, God, pour out humility, the grace of humility upon us. It probably doesn't hurt for us to look for a minute and um, and just ask ourselves some questions about humility. Where does where does humility sort of begin for a, for a Christian? Um, you know, it's a fair enough question, isn't it? Where where does humility begin for for a Christian? Um, I think we can answer that question by um, you know reading. Um, and looking, I should say, at Jesus. And um, it's interesting that we always, when we do that, we find the answers, don't we? Because Jesus' life was, was all about humility. It was, it was all about humility. It was all about him becoming a man. That took humility. Jesus humbled himself to, and became a man, the scriptures tell us. It was like um, living a, a frugal existence. You know, he had nowhere to lay his head, the scriptures say. That was humility. He, he could have been in a higher estate somewhere. He, and people probably would have still listened to him. I, I don't know, but he humbled himself and lived a, a frugal existence, obeying the Father's will. He said, I only do. We know what he said. I only do what the Father tells me he didn't come out with big you know i am doing this and i'm i i he just was so humble in that he acknowledged that he was submitting to the father and he did that all the way through the fact that he was sinless completely sinless and yet in humility, he, he took on the cross for us. The whole, the whole vile sins of the world were placed upon his sinless body for us. That was humility. His whole, his whole life was about humility, you know, submitting to, to being mocked and, and beaten by men. You know, he was the son of God. He, he, as he said, he could have called down angels and stopped all of it, but he submitted to the to the mockery and the beating and the and the cruel death. His life was all about humility. But back to our question: Where does humility start for the Christian? Well, I, I, I think, as we look at Jesus' life, and I, and I think as we look at what he did for us. Humility starts at, at salvation. Humility starts at salvation for us. That's where I believe it begins for us. You know, we have to come at, at salvation. We have to come to a, to a point where we, we see something very profound about ourselves. We have to come to the point where we see that, that we are sinners. And that uh, we need to 
admit that we uh, need Christ, that we need a saviour, that we need a need a redeemer, that we can't save ourselves, that we're hopelessly lost in, in sin. We're, we're slaves to sin, the scripture says. Interesting way to put it, isn't it? We're slaves to sin. It's salvation. We, we are always have to come to that point. Great, great preachers of old um, would always be sure, would always make sure that those who came forward to, to be converts had this idea in their heart. Finney and Whitfield and Wesley, all of those guys back then, um, Edwards, Jonathan Edwards, they always made sure that those who came forward to present themselves to Christ understood that they were sinners. It wasn't out of condemnation, of course, but they needed to understand that they needed a saviour. They needed to come to a place of repentance where, where they could, would confess in humility their need of Christ the need of his righteousness. And then, and only then, could the great exchange, the great exchange happen. You know, our sin, our sin for his righteousness. Our sin for his righteousness, the great exchange. And only when a person humbles himself and sees that he has sinned, acknowledges his need of a saviour, of Christ. Only when he humbles himself to that point can a person be saved. Not putting up a hand in the middle of a crowd, as we've seen so often, or well-meaning, I know, no criticism intended, but not just in the middle of an emotional time uh, following everyone else by putting up a hand. No, when we come, only when we come to that place where we see our need and we see who we are and we see who Christ is, our almighty Saviour, who wants to bring us through to a place of redemption. That's the place I think where humility starts. You may you may have other thoughts. I don't know, but you know it's our humility that allows his um, salvation uh, to bring us to the place where his mercy and his grace flows upon us. We humbly admit our helpless state. That's a great part of humility, isn't it? To, to humbly admit our, our helpless state. Um, unable to save ourselves, unable to even do anything really for, for God. Um, unable to, to save ourselves from a lost eternity. And humility puts us in the place where we can receive all that God has to give. All that he wants to give. And that's our place right now. This is what the church needs right now. To be in this place of openness to him. To, uh, to understand our, our, our need right at this moment. The church is so needy right now. So needy. I don't know if we're more worried about uh, getting back to the way we were. Um, you know, sorry if you've seen the movie with Barbara Streisand, <laughs> the way we were. We, you know, are we all thinking about the way we were and how we can get back to that? I, I think we're all probably a bit guilty of that, aren't we? But oh boy, oh, how our hearts need to be in that place of openness and neediness. Needing God to take us to where he wants us to be right now, not where we think we should be. Well, you know, um, there's probably, uh, I was going to tell you two stories of 
about my experience. I mean, the second one's just a very quick one because, you know, like you, I suppose I've had, you've had many and, and I've had many times where God has just done something miraculous in my life. And, you know, I, I can remember a, a time where I was at Cadinia Church at this particular time. I was a leader there at Cadinia and in the leadership group. And and um, there was a very challenging sermon preached one night. And uh, again, I can't remember exactly what it was. <laughs> Terrible, isn't it? And um, But I know it was very challenging. But it was the experience that just wiped everything else out, I think. Because the the challenge was for people to uh, get up out of their seat. And, you know, I think it was about God wanting moving us into a greater place and how we needed to be touched by God, something along those lines. But what I do remember was, clearly was, that the preacher was saying, get up out of your seat and come forward and, and allow people to minister to you. And I had this terrible reluctance to go and do it. And I suddenly realized that, that, I, that I was prideful. I didn't want to admit it for a few moments, but I was prideful. Here I was a leader, and I, I figured it out after a little while that I didn't want people to see me having to go up the front to get prayer. I didn't want them to think that I that I was needy and um, you know I, I struggled for quite a few minutes I really did but then I realized that if I didn't go forward if I didn't go forward and you know some of the people up the front there praying were, were just some of the normal congregation there it was again I was a little reluctant for some people that I wondered about to, to pray for me and to my shame. But, you know, to God's wonderful glory, uh, after, again, a heart struggle that I had, I went out the front and um, just allowed the people to pray. And, uh, you know, I, again... I didn't feel anything. I didn't see any visions. There wasn't any lightning bolts. There must be something wrong with me, must there? I don't know. But I tell you what, afterwards, wow, wow, what a change. What a change in my thinking and my heart. Uh, it was magnificent. And again, I realized that humility was the key to allowing God to pour out his grace and his power, his changing power and grace upon our lives, upon my life. I was so grateful for what, for what God did. Once again, I, 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 maybe you might say it with me, humility releases the grace and power, the changing power of heaven. Would you say that with me again? Humility releases the changing power and grace of heaven. And it truly does. It truly does. You know, God, in our, one of our verses that we read, um, you know, it was, it was that God opposes the proud. God opposes the proud, you know. Some versions would say resists the proud. And that's, that's quite a, a fair translation. You know, but I looked it up and um, in the Strongs it, it talks about resistance. But it says um, in one description, to range in battle against. To range in battle against. Against someone or something. God opposes the prayer. It's an awesome thought, isn't it? That, that God opposes pride. It's... It's not strange, I suppose, because it's the very opposite of, of God and his love and who he is. But, oh, boy, I don't like the thought that God would resist or oppose me. 
And yet I know that he would do it for our good. Because if we if we struggle with with lack of humility and pride, uh, we're only going to damage ourselves. We're only going to damage his name. We're, we're going to damage others, aren't we? And we're not going to bring glory to him. And all the glory, all the glory goes to him. We can do nothing of ourselves, can we? Absolutely and completely nothing of ourselves. Well, you know, humility um, humility is just such a uh, an awesome topic. There's, there's so much we, we could say. Um, it's, as I said, for our own good that God would oppose us, and yet we don't want to be in that place. The church right now doesn't need or want to be in that place of working in out of its own strength because humility is uh, is something that is the opposite to that humility is leaning upon god humility is is acknowledging our neediness it really is pride is the opposite pride Pride is about trusting in ourselves. Pride is about trusting in ourselves. The Apostle Paul gives us that clue in Corinthians when he, he talks about uh, how they were on their missionary journey and, and they went through so many trials, so many struggles. He, he says that it was so, so fierce, so tough that they, they almost felt like dying um, that's sort of the words he says, you know, we were we were sort of at the point of death almost. It was that hard, that tough. And yet, he says, this happened. Uh, and this is my words, God allows, it, it's like he's saying, God allowed it. He says, it all happened so that we would not trust in ourselves, but trust in him. Trust in him. And you know, humility is all about acknowledging our neediness. Acknowledging our neediness and placing our trust completely in him. It's a growth thing that needs to happen every day. Every day it needs to happen. All, all throughout our Christian walk. It needs to happen. You know, we, we love to have miracles, and, and don't we? We love to have miracles and leap forward and, and see great things happen instantly. And, and when they do, it's wonderful. But so much of what God does in our life is process, is healing and process as part of our discipleship, as part of letting the word come in from here down to here and heal us and change us and almost and nearly always thankfully not always we get miracles but it's in process that we see that healing you know as we you know this corinthians three eighteen says that as we we look upon him um as in a mirror we're transformed from glory to glory day to day Humility is about acknowledging our neediness. And, um, you know, our, our need, our need of his ways in our life. We're so set in our own ways, aren't we? The church is set in its ways. And right now, God's shaking and stirring the church up to, to shake it out of its, its set ways. And, and in our personal lives, our, our set ways are what hold us back so often. So many of those are based in fear and fear and control of the un, you know, fear of the unknown and control that keeps us feeling secure. And you know, the other thing, our other need is to see our need of others right now. Our need of others. Our need of the body of Christ. 
I know, I know there's, there's some, a lot of justifiable um, criticism, I suppose, of the, work, of the body of Christ, of the church. And yet God loves his church. God loves his church. God gave himself for the church, it says in scriptures. We're his bride. You know, and we need to function like that. We need to function that way. We need to come to this place, a new place now of, of honouring each other. It was so good to be on the, the Clarion Collective, which is a, a prayer, a Zoom prayer meeting that's been happening in uh, over the past number of weeks. And it's got people on there from all over the state and even some from interstate, I've noticed. And it, but it's so good, the unity of heart. It's, it's exciting to see the church coming together and acknowledging our need of each other. Humility is about our neediness. Humility is about trusting God. And so we need to ask the question. As I said, we could say so much more, but we, we need to ask the question of ourselves now. Um, where do I... And that's what I'm asking of myself. Where do I need to humble myself? Where do you need to humble yourself? I can't tell you that, but the, the Spirit of God can tell you that. The Spirit of God is in, in these, this message, in the scriptures that we've looked at. You know, where do you need to humble yourself? Where do we need eyes to see, um, you know, where to repent? Humility will bring us to the place of seeing where we need God's touch and mercy and grace. Like he showed me many, many years ago. I want to leave you with that question today. Ask God. Seek him. Take this seriously. You know, the whole church needs to take this seriously, but he's going to work in us. He's going to work in you personally. Where do you need to humble yourself? Is it with somebody? Is it a family member? Or where is it? What's the issue? I'm going to pray now and uh, ask that God would minister to you as I want him to minister to me and would it, that he would minister to the church in, in, in general in a greater way. Would you pray with me? Let's just finish in prayer. Lord God, we know, we know that this is your, your word today and we ask that you would come and that you would minister to us this word on humility, that you would reveal to us where we need to humble ourselves, where we need your grace. Oh Lord, I ask that you would speak to each one of us. And Lord, I ask that you would speak to your church, both at Bethel and everywhere, all over Geelong, all over the state, Lord. But Lord, we just, if we focus on home, we just pray that right now your spirit might reveal to those of us, to all of us, where we need to come to you in humble repentance. We pray this, Lord, believing today, believing that you will answer, you will hear our prayer, oh God. You won't leave us as we are because that's not your heart. You don't want to leave us where we're at. And so we pray in faith. We believe that you're going to do it, Lord, because of your great love for us and your desire to make us like yourself, Lord Jesus. So we thank you and bless you today. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Thank you, everybody, for listening. And um, 
I know that you'll seek the Lord seriously over this word, over his scriptures. Amen. Bless you.